Hello! In this video, we're going to explore the HDA Sampler Pack. This is a level created in UE4 that includes a number of procedural assets that work with the Houdini engine for UE4 plugin. Be sure to have that installed before opening up the level. Let's first walk around the gallery and take a quick look at what's there. Press play and we'll go into the level and walk around. What we can see is a collection of assets placed on pedestals. We can look around and see the assets. Some of them are on the floor. There's some barbed wire, sliding doors, crawling ivy, a spaceship, and more. What we're going to do is take a look at these props and show you how these procedural assets can be customized right in the Unreal Editor and then immediately viewed in the Play and Editor mode. So let's go back to the editor, open up the folder with the assets, but first let's turn off the bounce cards to reduce the glare from the lighting. Let's start with the haunted staircase. Press F key to have a closer look and we'll tumble around to see it from all sides. While this may look like a static staircase model, it is actually a Houdini digital asset. That means we have a set of parameters that we can adjust and handles to manipulate the asset and position with. So the very first time that I move a handle or change a parameter, what will happen is that the cooking process initiates, it activates the asset, and then recooks all the parts. This means that the first edit will be a bit slower, but after that, the feedback will be interactive. So now we can grab this handle, and when we push it, there isn't a long cook because the asset is alive. Now we can change the staircase width value, and the staircase height. You can see that we are changing the asset right here in the viewport. We are able to edit our game asset in the editor because a procedural network of nodes are being cooked by Houdini Engine behind the scenes, and we're getting the results pushed back into the editor. Now let's check out the spooky table asset, hit F to frame it, and there's our spooky table. So again, we have handles we can use to manipulate the table with. Since it's our first time with this asset, there's also an initial cook time. After about 40 seconds, this table will be ready to go. I'm just going to cut to that. Okay, now we can push and pull on the points and get a much more interactive response. So in addition to sizing the table or positioning it, we also have some controls like table width. We can also make changes to the chairs. For instance, we can randomly remove chairs if we don't need them. Let's only show about 84% of them. And we can also put a little bit of spin on the chairs, say 10% and a 0.1 tweak in their position just so that they get offset a little bit. Similarly, this asset allows us to add props on the table. We can increase the density of props, scale them up a bit, create a minimum scale. Oops, maybe that's too much. Our minimum scale is too big. There we go. Now if we tumble around, you'll see that we've got an updated asset. Imagine yourself populating a level like this putting the chairs in the right place, putting all the props on the table. That's a lot of work this asset is doing for you, right in the editor without going back to your 3D app. Another one I'd like to look at is the barbed wire fence off to the side. Press F key to focus on it. Let's tumble around to see it better. Again, this one lets me edit a curve to define its shape. I'm going to push the point back. And being the first time we touch the asset, it's going to require the asset to wake up. Basically, cook all those nodes in the background. Now we can grab the other handle, push that out, and you see that it's working much more interactively. Over here, we have controls to set up the turns per meter. In other words, what kind of density is in the barbed wire? We can change the coil width, maybe bring that down slightly, and so on and so forth. So a whole bunch of different parameters can be adjusted. And of course, what's interesting about all this is that we've updated these assets. If we go back and press play on this particular level, we start to walk around. We'll see the updated version of each asset that we just worked on. So we're able to make those updates in the editor. And then those updates become a part of our level. We can then evaluate how they look. And if we're not happy, we can just go back to edit mode and make more changes. Please note that the procedural nature of these assets work in the editor, but not while at runtime. It is purely a content creation solution designed to help game artists build levels faster and more efficiently.
So let's take a look at another asset. Oops, let's stop playback first. Let's go to the sci-fi wall builder. Hit the F key, tumble around. So in this case here, we've actually got the beginnings of a level where we can go in and start pushing and pulling points. That's going to alter the boundary shape of this level. We just have to let it do the initial cook as well. As this all takes place, we're going to time lapse the cooking in this video and jump to a few minutes later. The asset is cooked, and we can select one of the points and move it to change the shape of the level. And again, we get much faster feedback. This wall has been built up using modular components that are combined and positioned together in a procedural manner. That means we can come in with this particular asset and make changes such as how big is the top part of the wall, the body proportion, or how many body segments there will be. So you can see there's like one exhaust there, and now we have them stacked. This allows us to make creative decisions quickly and easily in the UE4 editor. Imagine level variations we can create using a tool like this. Obviously, this asset took longer to cook because a lot of calculations were taking place, but a unique version of this wall was just created right here on the fly. So that's pretty exciting. We've also got an IV asset here. There's a separate tutorial you can look at that covers this workflow. The IV is actually painted onto the pedestal geometry, and that's what the separate tutorial will cover, how to paint vines onto a surface. For the last asset, we're going to look at the spaceship. It's a prop asset that offers multiple sizes and shapes, and you can use the asset controls to define things like body length, nose inset, and so on. Let's change the nose inset parameter. Again, we have to let the asset cook, and about 30 seconds later, ding! We're able to tweak other parameters on the spaceship interactively. Smoothness, for example, and wing width. And now we can click on play and walk around the gallery and see all the changes we made to the assets reflected in our playback. There's a smoothed out spaceship. Here's the space level with two segments and a higher wall. Don't forget our barbed wire fans. So I hope this gives you a good sense of what you can do with the Houdini digital assets inside the UE4 editor. Feel free to download the sampler pack and play with the assets individually. Bye for now.